It's Christmas at Prestige Pawnbrokers. You're probably looking at about a quarter of a million. Where they help the super rich. We're looking for around a million euros for the whole collection. Swap luxury items. It's a big boy, this one. For quick cash. I'm in the business of making money, and it doesn't matter if it's cars, boats, antiques, whatever it is, I want it. Oh, wow. Located in affluent Surrey. It's really quite nice. And in the heart of London's jewellery district. God, isn't this getting vulgar? <laughs> they deal with top-end price tags. 1.2 million. For high society clients. Hello. Welcome to the world. And here. Of Posh Porn at Christmas. It's been a busy year for pawn shop boss James Constantino. I can get you to £125,000. Wow. With the London headquarters expanding... It's getting on my nerves already, that. I can't have it. I'll take much more of it. There's now even more big-ticket assets to deal with. OK, so this is Louis Vuitton. It looks like a guitar signed by the whole of Oasis. I set up the business in 2009 after finding that most of my friends who had lots of assets didn't have any access to cash. The run-up to Christmas sees a 50% increase in customers. Hello. Hello. How can I help? Um, I'm just here to sell some jewellery today. As people rush to get extra cash. Why are you looking to sell them? Christmas is coming up, so just some oh, extra Christmas shopping. Yeah. It? <laughs> it does not matter to me at all what people want the money for. It's all about the asset. At the pawn shop's headquarters in Hatton Garden, office manager Joe is hoping to make things more Christmassy. James, are we getting a tree this year? I love Christmas. I just love that time of year. I like giving presents. I like receiving presents. I like having time off work to catch up with family. Not really feeling the tree thing, to be honest with you. James is a tricky one at Christmas. He doesn't really get into the spirit of it. It's a little bit of an anti-climax, and everyone gets revved up about it, and they go up the pub and they order things like snowballs and uh, mojitos and drinks with umbrellas in, <laughs> and they pretend that they're happy. And nine times out of ten, they have a little row about something that happened earlier in the year, and they go in with the ump. <laughs> That's actually quite true. <laughs> you just need warming up. It becomes a little bit of a bind, to be quite honest with you. I'll make sure we all cheer you up. All right. At Christmas, they see even more bling than normal. Today, Alicia is front of house. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. How can I help? I'd like to show you some jewellery. Start with this one. Just fits in. Oh, wow. Here's a stunning piece. Isn't it? It's lovely. It's, it's a cutty piece. I actually saw Kate Middleton wearing it the other day oh, wow. in a magazine article. OK, that's beautiful. Is that the only piece you're looking to sell no, today? No, these are my two sort of very blingy ones. OK. They're emerald. Oh, wow. <laughs> It's I beautiful. never get to wear it though, so it's 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 silly to have just sat in a safe, but it's beautiful. This is my little baby. Um, this is my me time. The collection belongs to former Miss England Jackie. I mean, I'm very spoiled because I have a Porsche. Uh, this is my pride and joy. I get to put my foot down, listen to some music. This is very dangerous, though. <laughs> my life has been extremely glamorous. Huge boats, film festivals, Saint-Tropez. You know, I left home young. I did loads of travelling. I travelled the world. Um, I've lived in London. I've done the whole London thing. That lifestyle isn't for me anymore, the, the crazy lifestyle. I like the more chilled out and hometown, home cooking. Trees, green, beaches. <laughs> Jackie has recently moved back to Dorset from London. Currently, I'm back home living with my mum. Hello! Hello! I feel like I'm a teenager again and I've moved back home. Hello, Izzy! Can you help me? How are you? Izzy's helping me make a cup of tea. She's the stirrer lady. I've got a very big family. I've got a twin sister. A brother. I did have two other sisters. One's passed away recently. They're all married, loads of kids, so a very big family. Got some things. Oh, here. let's have a look. 
I started modelling at 13 years old and then carried on modelling for years and then I did Miss England. Do remember this, you and Mum were at home and I just won Miss England and I think this is me on the phone. I remember. On the phone talking to your mum. We've been trying to get hold of you for ages. So it was November 2003 that I won Miss England. Did my reign, as they say, opening shops and cutting ribbons and um, going to small events and, you know, being a sort of minor celebrity. Went off to do Miss World. We got to go to Hong Kong and we were all being shouted at and screamed at by all the crowd, like trying to get our autographs. <laughs> and... This is incredible. Now Jackie wants to swap centre stage for backstage and go into music management. Today I'm here in a studio in London. And Lucy's an artist that I work with. And we're here to rehearse today for her gig on Saturday. I'm hoping to move over to America and take that next step um, and basically start from scratch. I have a visa and a green card that's on its way and I'm at this point now where it's a make or break. I've got to go out there and give it a try. Jackie plans to move to the States straight after Christmas. I like decorating, making it look all festive, then you've got to take it all down again. To fund her new life in America, she wants to sell a collection of jewellery from her old life. I recently went and got them all valued. The whole package is probably about 150000 but that's retail. I realise I might not get retail value for them. If it's slightly lower, I'll have to have a good think about it. <laughs> it's now up to James and the team to come up with a figure that will tempt Jackie into selling. Porn shop in Hatton Garden, some of the staff haven't had a chance to do any Christmas shopping. Imagine my friend has done all of her Christmas shopping in August. That's weird. I can, I can beat that. I did about half of my shopping by January. My approach is, like a lot of things in life, is if I ignore it, it goes away. So about two days before Christmas, I realise it's not going to go away, and I actually have to start getting some Christmas presents. Amazing stuff you can get from Pound Shop. That's been cheap. It is cheap. Well, I'm cheap. Look at, look at my clothes. I'm cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas at the pawn shop. So you want the money for a real special Christmas then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Well, let's try and get that. <laughs> <laughs> the most of the team is a time for celebration. Hi, James. You look nice. I always look nice. <laughs> Do you feel nice? Oh, I feel lovely. You look nice as well. It's, what's, what's a special occasion. I do like my staff to enjoy themselves at Christmas, as long as I can't hear them doing it. It's a nice little number. It's quite expensive. Looks it. Looks Thanks. like good quality. Thank you. James pretends that he doesn't like Christmas, but he loves it. Be careful how you wash that. Not on a hot wash. Cool wash only. Drip dry, yeah? Just make sure you get that right. Thanks for the advice. Oh, look at Lawrence, he's a living a testimony to the perils of hot washing. Good afternoon, Hatton Garden Winter Wonderland. The pre-Christmas rush means the business is at its busiest. After visiting Sheffield, James is eager to get back to work. Good morning. Hiya, you all right? What have you done? <laughs> Just warmed up for you. Looks like Santa's Grotto. Exactly. Oh no. <laughs> Do you love it? Oh yeah, I love it. <laughs> oh what? You can't say you don't like the fireplace. <laughs> Just don't need this excitement in my life. Oh god. Do you feel like Santa when you're sitting there? <laughs> no, I don't feel like Santa when I'm sitting there. You will by the end of the day, I bet you. Enjoy. Prestige. Thank you. Today, James has asked jewellery expert Ian into the shop. Ian, how are you? Hello. Oh, just the man. To look over former Miss England Jackie's jewellery collection. Right, so let's have a look. Yeah, grab a seat. Well, look, we've got some really unusual stuff here with the emeralds and diamonds. I mm. mean, they really are statement pieces. I mean, a lot of it is pretty straightforward. Um, some oh of it is God. not any great values, but what do you think of those bits? 
You like well, emeralds, don't you? I like emeralds, yes. But I mean, the emerald, you need to first know whether it's been treated or not. And looking at it, I would say it's treated. But this one is a bit of a whopper. Do you see many rings that size? <laughs> not with green stones in them. I think the emerald is quite nice and it's not the top quality, you know. No. But, and the diamonds are quite small. You know, I would have rather have had a single row of diamonds and nice big stones, mm. but they've gone to keep the price down. Yeah. Now right. that put us through our paces. I mean, it's such an unusual thing. We don't think it's bundles of money, but to the right person. The diamonds are dreadful. We thought it was Cartier first, then we started looking at it and we realised it wasn't. Cartier wouldn't use diamonds of that quality. <laughs> They're not good enough. I mean, this is just a dress ring. Are you going to tell me anything good today? And there's a De Beers ring with a raw diamond in the middle, but to be honest with you, it looks like a bit of coal. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I want a diamond, I want a diamond. Cartier. They make lovely things. Amazing, you know, easy to wear, saleable at the right price. So basically what you're telling me, um, these pieces of fairly decent quality, the yeah. emeralds, you think, so we could, uh, at a certain figure, they're, yeah. they're saleable. Yeah. A lot of the other bits and pieces Really low, va fairly low value. Very low value. They are second hand. Yeah. Tell her if you went in and bought a Rolls Royce and drove out with it, it's second hand the moment she sat in it and paid for it. And she won't get her money back. I was rather hoping you were going to cheer me up today, you. Well, I'll take you out and buy you a drink and cheer you up. Sounds yes, like a bloody good idea to come on. Here we get gone. <laughs> This afternoon in Weybridge, James has received an inquiry that could help put him in the mood for Christmas. Wow, look at that, it's a proper monster, isn't it? This is uh, quite interesting. This is a 50 foot uh, motor yacht, uh, a lady called Alex, the owner of the yacht. She's looking for £200,000 as a sale figure for the boat and would consider a loan against it. This is fantastic for us because usually we have to travel halfway around the world to see these big yachts and this one moored in St Catherine's dock is literally up the road from Hatton Garden so quite excited to get down there have a little look and see if we can get a deal done it's a nice big number 200,000 pounds we possibly could earn out of this pop your hats on then happy Christmas I absolutely love Christmas. I'm like a child. And I'm really excited and can't wait for Christmas Day. The boat belongs to 47-year-old entrepreneur, Alex. You would not believe that this young man is 87 years old, my father. <laughs> and he's a lovely little boy. I have a Christmas party every year. Mince pies, mulled wine. Put your hat on, there you go. Lovely, Mrs Christmas. <laughs> Oh, we'll have a bit of a knees up. Yeah. Happy Christmas! I think it's a time of year where everybody should come together, have fun and generate the love. <laughs> come on then, there you are. These the Baba Lulus. It's Christmas, let you jump on. Alex lives in South London with her five dogs and four cats. Good little boy. There he is. I do this every year with the babies. We're one big family. That's him in his Christmas jumper. This is our lovely Christmas tree. Although it's small, it's nicely shaped. A little bit like myself. Lovely. I love interior design. Absolutely love it. I run a refurb company and really, really like getting into people's houses and doing stuff. This is Sammy the Stag. He's very old, he's vintage. We like him. And then I do property myself. My brain is always on overdrive. I was thinking about the next business deal. I'm always thinking about the next property that I can buy. I love to get something that's really unattractive and turn it into something that's really pretty. I love a candlelit room. I think it brings real atmosphere to an occasion or to a party. It's my best favourite. Entrepreneur Alex and her friend bought the boat in London's exclusive St Catherine's Dock a year ago. We bought this boat because it's got a central London mooring and also you can conduct business meetings on here if you want to. 
We come here every weekend. It's a great place to be after we've been to a club or to a party and we stay the night. It's fabulous. I've got the place all laid up as though you would be having dinner here because I think it's really important to sell the dream. We're looking to sell the boat for 200,000, which I think is an amazing price given the central London location. I'm a businesswoman and would like to make a slight profit on the boat, so that's my aim. That's why I'm coming to James, because I think he's got all the right contacts. I would really miss the boat, but it's become something that we don't need anymore. And therefore, you know, we, we've decided to sell it and reinvest the money into property. I know I don't come across as a sailor, but if the boat needed cleaning, I'd get on my hands and knees and scrub it. Christmas is the busiest time of year at the pawn shop. Good afternoon, Shadow speaking, how can I help? And boss James is keen to capitalise by decorating the front of his four stores. People should be leaving not only with uh, a fistful of dollars, but a nice, healthy, Christmassy feeling inside once they've looked at the tinsel uh, that's on offer. We're decorating the front shop, Deborah. We could do it in half an hour, but I'm planning. Half an hour? You've got 10 minutes, and I'll help you. You will? Yeah. So you've got Come no on. work to do, Deborah. I've got plenty Ooh. of work, that's why you've got 10. <laughs> Come on, Maria. Let's work as a team. <laughs> <laughs> He is beautiful. <laughs> that is lovely. What do you think? Is that a bit over the top if I... Definitely do you alone on those. <laughs> <laughs> that she will start it for Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, God. I hate Christmas decorations. <laughs> Says it all. Wouldn't we have some sort of tree? Oh, for God's sake. Right. Less than two miles from the pawn shop's headquarters, James is waiting to board Alex's maritime crash pad. I'm in St Catherine's Dock, come to meet Alex, the owner of a beautiful 50-foot um, motor yacht. In terms of a setting, it don't really get much better than this. She's looking for £200,000. Doesn't seem like a lot of money to me. So when James gets here, I'm going to show him around the boat. I want to show him the lounge. I want to show him the helm, where the captain's seat is, so he can put the hat on and then down into the bedroom area. And let's hope we come back up again. James! <laughs> How are you doing? You all right? Ahoy, matey! How do I get down? Just pop up that way and I'll let you in. Lovely. Hi, Hi James, right? how are you? Lovely oh, to meet you. You're all right. Oh. Mm -hmm. Don't fall in. No, I'll try not to. Ah, there. And I sit, watch the step. Very good, very Oh, it's lovely in there, isn't it? Yeah, it's fantastic. This is the lounge area. Yeah. It's got a nice right. feel about it, hasn't it? It's a nice chill-out area. Lovely. This is the kitchen, actually, while we're here. So it's oh, got nice. a nice galley kitchen with underfloor heating. Well, it seems like the previous owners spent a few quid on it. They did a, a full refurb on the boat. And this is the master bedroom, James. It's really comfy. Hop on and have a bounce. This is where it all happens, yeah, is it? hop on. Oh, yes. Yeah, right, Don't bang it? your head. It's nice. Yeah, I like that. Ah, so it's got a real nice feel to it, you know? It's probably because it's quite spacious and it's not pokey like a lot of boats. I mean, it's a motor yacht, James, mm. you know. Um, this is the kind of boat that you can sail to the south of France with quite happily. So how many uh, people will this hold? So this boat has got three bedrooms, three bathrooms, and it'll hold, hold six people quite happily. OK. So this is the helm. Make yourself at home. Well, this is very romantic, isn't it? Do you actually take this boat out anywhere? Actually, James, we don't take it out. Oh. So we leave it moored and then we will go out for the night, have dinner, come back and crash. And it's fabulous for that because it's a central London right. location. Just run through the numbers for me one more time. So we would like to get, ideally, 200,000 and I think it's well worth it. If we are unable to find a buyer, would you, would you actually consider a loan against the boat? We might, depending on how much money you'd prepare to give us. I've got something for you. Oh, right. And I'd love you to put that on. Yeah. 
There you go, Captain. I think that's me. I think you look like a jolly old sailor. You look lovely. Give us a kiss. Mwah. Lovely. It's really lovely at this time of year, Christmas. Great boat. I think at 200 grand it represents value. When you compare it to some of the dwellings here at one and a half million quid, it seems really good value. I'm going to do my best for you and I'll let you know how I get on. Thank you so much. Lovely, Lovely to, see to see you. you. Lovely. Cheers. Take see care, you. James. Bye. I think it went really, really well. He's a lovely guy and I really think he can help us. So I'm really, really pleased that he came along. That was pretty impressive. A fantastic looking boat, all up to scratch, ready to go. It's obviously been well maintained. 200 grand gets you a bolt hold in central London in St Catherine's Dock. How bad's that? Being surrounded by all these fairy lights, Christmas trees, it's sort of getting me in a sort of Christmassy mood. And I'd like to uh, end the year with a bit of a result for Alex. I think it'd be a nice way to go out. In Dorset, former Miss England Jackie is spending as much time as possible with her family in the run-up to Christmas. Very nice. Do you want to go sit around that side? Very yeah. nice. She's hoping to sell her extensive jewellery collection so she can start a new life in America. These are good, aren't they? And is waiting on a phone call from Alicia. So how do you feel about the call then? I don't know, really. I'm a bit... I'm very anxious because I don't know what they're going to say. You've had your American dream for such a long time mm. and it'd be nice to be able to at least try and fulfil it. It's been really tough trying to get prices on some of these items, but I finally have a figure for her and now it's time to break it down to her. Hi Jackie, how are you today? I'm not too bad, thank you. How are you doing? Um, I'm good, just calling you regarding your items. Yes. Now, from your selection, the items that generated the, the highest amount of money is obviously the Cartier necklace and also the emerald and diamond necklace and ring set. Okay. This set is also quite valuable. Yes, we've done a lot of research on them and what we can offer you has actually amounted to £35,000. Okay. And that's for everything? Yes. Within that offer, how much were you offering for the, the Trinity necklace? Our offer for that necklace is £15,000. Right, £15,000. And do you have a price for the emeralds? For the set, you're looking at £12,000. So would you be prepared to just take the emeralds, for instance? Yes, we would definitely be preferred to, to take individual items. You don't have to sell it as a lot. I think giving that advice, it may make more sense to me if I just sell a, a few of the pieces that I'm less attached to. Sure. I'll get back to you and we can have a sort of more in-depth chat about maybe a few of the individual pieces. Yeah, that's brilliant. Cheers, Alicia. You too, bye-bye. Alrighty. Hello. Oh. Hi. Well, they, they they wanted to give for everything. They said thirty-five thousand <gasps> for everything. No way. It might be that I go back and just sell the emerald pieces to them, um, because why was that a better offer? Well. 10 to 12,000 for both pieces. How does this affect then your American dream? Well, you may have me here a little bit longer. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that's Yay. cheers. Yay. I'm Yay. quite happy about that. So, Aww. here's to Mum's spare room. <laughs> <laughs> It's really difficult when you're dealing with clients that have got high expectations and they've got retail figures in their head. Quite often, the second-hand value is far less than the number they're expecting. Entrepreneur Alex has come to headquarters to see James for news on the sale of her luxury yacht. I'm hoping he's going to get the 200,000 that we need to sell the boat. So I'm feeling amazing. A little bit nervous, but really amazing. Can't wait to get in there. Well, it's a big number for us, so it'd be nice to get that one away. Hi, James. Hello. I have Alex here. Hi. You. You're all right, Alex? Hi, James. Come How are in. you? Yeah, I'm good. You're all right. Lovely to see you again. Yeah, good. Just grab a seat. How you been? Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, really good. Good, good. Getting ready for Christmas. You're getting ready for Christmas, are you? Been Christmas shopping? Where you been? Bought a few things for my stockings. Oh, yeah, I bet. Yeah. So that was interesting. Remind me again of what you need. 
Right, I really want to achieve 200,000 on the boat, James, to Two, sell it, yeah. 200 grand. And uh, you did intimate to me that you might consider a loan at some point if we... I might consider a loan yeah. if you came up with that, if that was something that, that, that you would consider, but I'd rather sell the boat, you definitely. Sell it. Uh, we think that 200 grand it represents value. Um, for obvious reasons, for someone who wanted to stay in town. Um, the negatives um, at the moment is that, that that market is really flat. We have actually talked to a number of people um, and put feelers out, and we've got quite a bit of interest in the boat. That's um, great, James, brilliant. Um, but I am in a position to tell you that at the moment, unfortunately, Alex, we haven't brought a buyer to the table. So, okay. but what I'm able to do to you, if it helps you out in any way going forward with what you're trying to do, we would be prepared to lend you £100,000 secured against the boat. Right, okay. How do you feel about that? I think that's something that I'd have to think about, um, but thanks very much for your offer. And I think, if I'm honest, I'd rather you sell the boat, to yeah, be honest. Okay. And I think if anyone's going to sell it, James, it's you. OK, well, let's keep working with it. You've got something there if you needed to dip into it, 100 grand, if you wanted to get hold of that quickly. Amazing. Thanks ever so much, James. Lovely. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Well, lovely. In the meantime, we'll keep it on our books and see what we can do. Smashing. Thanks ever lovely. so much. Lovely to see you. Thanks for popping in. Yeah. Bye, bye. Bye. To be completely honest, I probably won't take the offer, um, but it's really great and it's lovely to know that it's there if we need it. We have actually got people that would like to go down there and have a little look at it, um, but just in case she needs the cash quickly or she could do with some uh, a cash injection, there is a hundred grand on the table for her um, should she need to do a little bit more uh, Christmas shopping. With another year nearly over at the pawn shop, the team are heading to the annual company Christmas outing. All right, guys, come through. James has arranged a visit to the local pub, but he's taking bar games to a whole new level. Right, what we're going to do tonight is we're going to split into three teams and we're all going to have a go at this ice carving and I'm going to judge the winner. And to help me come to a decision, I've got a surprise judge, fellow judge with me, and he's here tonight. <laughs> Merry Christmas! <laughs> Are you up for it? Oh, all the time, darling. <laughs> OK, right. The guys had ten minutes to create a Christmas-themed ice sculpture. I'm not used to wearing an apron. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any plans? <laughs> <laughs> they all look like they might need a little bit longer than that. And then a big body... <laughs> I reckon we should give it a go ourselves. We are going to do it. Don't you get jealous. We're doing what? a snowman. I can't see the snowman, but it is a snowman. <laughs> Stabbing at the ice was a great stress relief and I was able to get rid of some frustration. We got a win. I was thinking about a Rolex that we lost money on. James, you're doing fantastic, darling. That's Howard. Well, how long have we got, Jane? You've got five more minutes to finish off. So it's an amazing Christmas cracker, and we've won. Oh. I think they're doing all right, actually. Are we winning, James? I don't want to give anything away just yet. It's not over yet. <laughs> Two more minutes. I know what you're thinking, James, a winner. <laughs> right, down tools, everyone. I think this is the finishing touch, boys. What do you think of that? Oh, well... What do you think? <laughs> um, anyway, let's have a little look here. I think what we were looking for in the ice sculpture was a real team effort that included originality and craftsmanship. Now I know why we were short cashing up tonight. <laughs> <laughs> The only one thing obvious to me straight away is the striking resemblance to a member of their team. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little bit uncanny. I'm impressed. Right, so what we got oh. here then? It's a cracker like you guys. Ooh. <laughs> I like it. I love a cracker. I never know what's going to come out of it, darling. <laughs> well, that's not bad, is it? Not that's bad. not bad Good at either. all. Not bad, not bad. What have we got here? 
James, Ian, we have a posh snowman. It looks a little bit owl-like, doesn't it? Chunky yeah. cheeks. You've all done exceptionally well. But walking down the line, I think we've come to a sort of decision we now. We definitely have, yeah. But I think the one that gets it for us is Lawrence's team. Yay! <laughs> well done, lads. Well done, Howard. Thank you very much. Well, obviously, that's for me. You get a medal each, boys. Yes. Thank you. Nigel Howard and myself were definitely the worthy winners. We deserved to win that trophy. We worked the hardest. Ah! Oh. It was really fun to go out with the whole team. We did have a laugh, and we are like a big family, so it's really fun when we get to spend time out of work together. I was amazed at the effort that the guys put in. I thought they'd give up after two minutes, but they're, all of them were really good. And, and what a wonderful way to end the year, although we are £2 light um, at the end of the day.